live now? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going okay. Live. okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, we watched a great video about uh, our developers. Like uh, there were some really gems in there, uh, and we're going to have a great talk, a great panel about games market in Turkey right now. And uh, like if you watch yesterday's show, uh, you can, uh, you're going to recognize him. Like uh, he has, uh, man, uh, you left me like big shoes to fill in. You did a great job yesterday. <laughs> Appreciate that. Job. Appreciate that. Yeah. Yarkin uh, Arahan is a business developer and a uh, business development manager, I'm sorry. And eight no games. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we're going to have a talk about games market in Turkey. Uh, the stage is yours. Take it away. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'll take it from here. Um, absolute pleasure to be with everyone today as well. Uh, I've got some lovely guests with me. Uh, Mark and Bartel are with me. Uh, I'm not entirely sure whether or not uh, Mehmet is going to be joining us. Um, regardless, uh, we'll get started. Um, and uh, yeah, um, Yusuf already gave me an, in gave an intro. Uh, I'm uh, the business development manager for Aiden Games, uh, we're a gaming company located in Istanbul, primarily working on uh, hybrid casual, casual and mid-core game development uh, on top of Web3 game development. So we're a little bit all over the place. Um, before I like, uh, before I start like any of these panels, I'd like to, um, like obviously I know you guys, but I want to make sure that everyone watching us uh, right now also gets to know you guys a little bit better as well. Why don't you guys start by introducing yourselves, what you do, how you got into this industry, what your passions are, and um, and then we'll move on. We'll, you know, we'll probably go with like a more conversational flow. And uh, yeah, once we get the intros out of the way, we'll dive right into a topic at hand. Uh, Boachan, why don't we uh, start with you? Okay, hello again. I am Boachan. Uh, I am working from uh, 2012 in gaming industry in Turkey, especially. Uh, also with the, some works in the last five years for Europe too. Uh, my specialize was on the uh, marketing and events side. Uh, I started for it uh, to learn, first of all, the community side. Uh, and now uh, I got a studio uh, that makes good games about competitive side uh that called we are versus and i'm working on the competitive gaming market mostly uh and in the in this market uh, my job is right now doing the, all the marketing and business development stuff in the uh our uh, company and right now we are developing our works uh and trying to understand and analyze more and more the turkish market back thank you so much uh, hello i am berk aydemir i am uh, the co-founder of team e games located in istanbul uh, we are developing hybrid casual and pc games also i'm a, a registered lawyer to uh, istanbul bar and i'm excited to be here in this panel and discuss uh, turkey's uh, game market uh, Actually, the connection between the game world and law has always excited me. Uh, that's why I'm here right now. And uh, as a law professional and an uh, entrepreneur, I have seen the opportunities, also difficulties in the sector closely. Uh, right now, uh, actually, uh, I'm looking forward to sharing my thoughts about the future of game sector in Turkey. Also, I would uh, really happy to learn from all of you today. Uh, I hope it will be a productive uh, event. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. That's that's really what I love about these types of events as well, because you don't really realize how many like shareholders are in the same industry with you, right? Like, so when you think about the game industry, you think about the players and the developers, right? But there's just so much more that goes on to it. There's just organizers, there's people that that like you know work in esports category, you know, to try to make these like more I guess competitive um, like platforms happen for. The more competitive side and then you've got like uh obviously the legal side of things and uh, uh these types of platforms these types of like events allow us to get together with many many uh like um <coughs> players in the same industry and it's super insightful because i'm gonna learn a lot from you guys as i'm sure and maybe you guys have some questions from the developer side that you're curious about and maybe i can provide answers to that 
uh, in that regard, uh, thanks to um, you know the organizers for bringing us together. And before we move on, uh, Umut, amazing timing. We were just getting through our intros. I introduced myself, Boshan and Berk also introed themselves real quick. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got into this industry, and uh, then I'll start with the questions as we move along. Sure. Uh, shall I start? I yeah, guess. go ahead. Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Umut. I'm one of the co-founders and the CEO of T-Play Studio. And we've been making games since 2019. Uh, we do games in mobile, instant games. And I, I hesitate to say instant games because now it's a broad term. So we do games that work on browsers, in apps, or also in cars. So we do in-car games as well. On top of that, we also do um, PC games. We're going to launch our first PC game next quarter. And we launched the most successful accelerator program in the game industry, Ophon, uh, generating more than 50 million downloads in total. And we're looking forward to launching our for first Forever franchise in 2024. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. So thank you, guys. And uh, on a quick side note, congrats on the most recent published uh, title as well. And what, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're fans Thank here you. at Aiden Games as well. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's, it's great that you guys are able to succeed in such a uh, sometimes fierce and competitive environment as well. Now, um, looking at the games industry and looking at the topic of our panel today, it's, it's mostly, it's not like on a massive scale, it's on a more micro scale. We're going to be looking at the games industry and the market shape in Turkey on a, on a local scale when you think about it. But uh, the past year, maybe even a year and a half, I dare say, has been less than stable, let's say, for the global games industry. And obviously, this has uh, affected the local market in Turkey as well uh, in, a, in a variety of ways. But now the landscape of the gaming market in Turkey has definitely changed. Uh, I, I think it's safe to say, like, maybe a couple of years back, like three, four years back, hyper casual was all the hype, all the, like, you know, focus was on there but now we're seeing that uh there's a lot there's a lot more potential here than there's a lot more talent uh on the developers on the publishers networking whatever it may be uh, and everyone in the gaming industry is now branching out we're looking at studios making hybrid casual games casual games mid-core games we've seen a lot of activity on um platforms like steam even epic games and uh, web3 has had a lot of movement during the just prior to the crash, there's when uh, we've made a Web3 uh, game as well, a blockchain game too. Um, so how do you think the market has evolved, like from where, from point A to point B? And it's definitely a growing market, but what caused this growth in Turkey? Why do you think there's so much, uh, like how, why do you think there's so much of an exponential growth in Turkey and what factors caused that? Anyone can start, by the way. I, I like to have like a free flow of discussion. Uh, so nothing strict, just just four guys talking. <laughs> let, let me get started. Um, there are a lot of reasons. Uh, there are two questions, actually. Number one, like, why is Turkey growing so fast? And number two is like, how is it going in Turkey in the last year? So let's address the first question. The reason it, it uh, blew, like it, it started growing really fast is because we had, we had a very good infrastructure uh, in digital marketing and other uh, areas of um, information technology in general uh, before the boom uh, of uh, mobile games and we caught that wave we rode it well and on top of that we had the technical background and uh, business background to fulfill you know um, what needs to be done in 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 terms of uh, ecosystem ecosystem and uh, um, marketing side of things and development side of things in other words, so we already did a lot of good things that could be reskilled or upskilled to game industry. Um, I'm I'm talking about like late 2000s uh, and early 2010s, and then you know the hypercasual boom came at the right time. We already had like unicorns when that happened in the game industry, and therefore 
we were quick to address that. Um, and like regardless of what uh, resources we had, we already had like 8 million university students and 1 million, 1 million unemployed grads when that happened. So we were very quick to allocate some of the resources we have. And with the help of uh, right timing and right place, uh, we, we were we were able to grow and, you know, we, we work hard. We are hardworking people. We are technically very uh, sophisticated. We are very good at engineering, you know, technical side of things. And, you know, we're good at business. So I think in general, a combination of those helped. But the right, uh, the, the main thing was we were at the right place at the right time. Uh, so we just utilized it well. And I'm, I'm happy to tell that, you know, I think we became number one in terms of free to play game, uh, mobile game production. Um, and that's, that's the first, like, I don't know other areas that we are number one at. Uh, maybe we are, maybe that's my ignorance, but we are doing a, a lot of great things in other industries as well. Um, but I think the most impressive one is the game industry in Turkey. Um, so that's that's my answer in a nutshell, like why? And just a quick uh, addition, Turks are good at finding shortcuts and Turks are good at doing uh, things in a smaller production cycles, so short-term things. And Hypercage actually provided that too. So that helped a little bit. That accelerated the process uh, like a catalyzer. Uh, and now we're here, but you know we also have like big, major game. if you count like five mobile games like three of them are producing turkey i'm talking about like royal match you know billion dollar games i'm talking about like like even tomb blast and we have ips but also we have pc games console games too so it's not like tailors and stuff um uh, we can even count crytek as a turkish company <laughs> located in germany so we Definitely have a lot of <laughs> yeah. i mean uh, you know uh I mean, yeah, it's a, I don't know, but is uh, Mr. Godzilla a Turkish player? Like, it's the same topic. <laughs> yeah, but it, it helped. It it's something that supports the Turkish ecosystem for sure. So in that sense, you know, maybe we can account it as a Turkish company, but definitely within the Turkish ecosystem. Um, so uh, the future is bright. We are just at the very beginning. It's a marathon. Um, so I'll, I'll stop there and let uh, Boachan and Berk uh, tell their thoughts. Uh, thank you, Mut. Uh, I'm totally agreeing with you with that uh, application was a perfect fit for Turkey's uh, ecosystem, actually. And uh, as you said, it's a good time and uh, actually right time and right work. And it's paid off, actually. Uh, as you said, uh, a few uh, games uh, proved themselves at uh, global area also uh, in casual genre. And a lot of uh, small game studios like us uh, proved themselves on uh, hyper casual genre. We got uh, really good uh, examples of like tailors and uh, we were ready to grow up, actually. And the right time and right uh, everything started very well and uh, i'm believing also uh, the future is really bright with this uh, kind of huge know-how uh, we gained a lot of know-how i believe uh, in this past few years and uh, it was like uh, small studios were working with mainly publishers but uh, more of them uh, started self-publishing and uh, it goes on, it still grows and the opportunity and the uh, future is uh, really exciting to me. Uh, that's uh, I want to add on your uh, speech. Thank you. I want to add something more. I think uh, in Turkish market, uh, many, most of many uh, game developer companies uh, were understanding the local market. Because uh, in games market in Turkey, uh, always the gamers started to make games first. So Turkish game developers and marketers have a deep understand of, uh, understand of this market. So this was the uh, most 
touchable moment uh, for the Turkish market when it was just growth with the focus on the uh, mobile gaming first. Then uh, I see that in Turkish market, I worked with European guys on Asian sides, but in Turkey, we have more collaboration between us, more collaboration, uh, more knowledge sharing. So we just make more friends, not like uh, rival companies, each other in Turkey. So in every industry, if there's a collaboration, there's a growth. I think that that's the key answer for me. So thank you for question again. Yeah, definitely agree with uh, all the points, uh, especially with both Uwut and Barak said, the future is like the potential is endless. It's definitely not a sprint, it's a marathon. And uh, just like you were saying, Washa, I was I was just, uh, do you guys, you guys remember the Spotify like yearly rap thing where they do this, uh, like, oh, this is how much music you listen to. This is the type of genre you listen to. Xbox did the same thing. So last year in 2023, I spent around 1,400 hours on my Xbox playing games. That's like nearly 20, 25% of the entire year I've spent playing a game. And I'm looking at the people that work at our company. Our founders are gamers, our heart, like I'm talking OG gamers, like like Commodore systems, like Sega, like Dreamcast, like Super Nintendo Entertainment Systems. We're all old school. And I feel like the collaboration, that's why I think uh the success of this industry blew up so well in turkey because at, at at its core most developers most people working in this industry are also gamers we don't just see this as a as another business profitable business model or anything like that um yeah amazing insights and this is gonna lead quite well into my next question as well uh going just back to, just be, oh, yeah, go ahead before Please, you yeah. Before you go back to your question, I, I, I would like to respectfully disagree with something, and that is that we are sharing our know-how and uh, experience well. Uh, I think we should do better, uh, and I, I think we have to learn. We have a lot to learn from, let's say, uh, uh, South Korean, Finnish, and uh, German ecosystems. So they're, I think, doing a better job. So... I would like to see more founders, uh, more executives, more leaders sharing their know-how, data, um, and you know, experience in general with others in the ecosystem. Um, for example, like uh, if you, if you look at the uh, you know last five years, we wrote history, right? Like it, it, it was in, like Rolex just did an exit in like eighteen months, you know. Like it, that's insane. It's they incredible. they power, yeah they <laughs> power they powered hundreds and hundreds of studios. For example, yeah. Ophon was an accelerator program that generated more than fifty million downloads. That's number one accelerator program in the world. And yet, like nobody asked me how I did it so far. And you know, how, I don't I don't know like if they're knocking the door of Rolex to learn from them. Like, how, how did you, like, support the whole ecosystem, almost like a government for, like, years? So I think we should create these relationships. It's almost like um, we, we, we are not sh – I would love to share. It's almost like I'm going to knock doors to tell people, hey, I can tell you. Like, please – and I, I keep saying this, but – you know, uh, so far, I don't, I don't think it, it's like as good as it's supposed to be. I, I, I don't know. I would like to ask you: Are you, are you happy with the NGOs, for example? Are you happy with the events? Do we have something like DevCom, or uh, you know, like? Uh, I'm agreeing with you. Uh, the uh, knowledge sharing is good at the uh, maybe uh, with our scale uh, studios, uh, studios like or companies like Rolik, uh, we were not able to learn how did uh, they uh, manage out to, to growing up. Actually, uh, uh, growing up a business really hard. Uh, it's uh, most of the uh, studios closing in f just few years and just. Uh, uh, one in a hundred maybe goes exit, uh, uh, and uh, it's really hard to learn from them uh, how did they. And we can see uh, them anywhere also. Uh, and yeah. I'm 
I wish uh, they will share a lot of knowledge with us. If yeah. they, uh, it, or uh, we can learn it from heart. Uh, <laughs> wait. Yeah. Uh, we sh uh, you know. <laughs> By the way, for example, speaking of Rolex, you know, I know, for example, Brock himself like lectured at universities. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like we created Ophon, they powered it. We helped people. We I had my own podcast, and you know, a lot of people like benefited from it. But what I'm trying to say is that it should be more broad. It should it shouldn't be just you know a few companies. It should be all the companies, you know. Uh, there are billions of dollars being generated from Turkey, and yet we don't have the ecosystem uh, mentality yet, I believe. Like, I think we can do better. I think we can do what Finnish did, what South Korean did. We can start events. We can organize better ecosystems. And, you know, we are working on it. But at the, at the same time, I really will. Here's, here's a call for everyone in Turkey who's making a game. Let's do better. Like, tell me what I can do. Ask, call me. Like, I answer every message, like every email, every LinkedIn, everything. Like, it, it people try to ask for an internship. I answer. Uh, this should be more broad, but there are some co-founders I cannot get a hold on. Like in Turkey, I cannot get a like when I want to do something together. It's really hard to find a partner when it comes to building it ecosystem or a community so i think that's that needs to be some changes there i want to add one more thing because yeah, about my topic so uh probably or maybe it can be for the uh you were talking about mostly hyper casual market right or casual market because no i'm talking the about the industry entirely Tur yeah. turkish turkish game ecosystem like game development if production we think it as a as a whole uh i can say it like um, even the in the global the most rival companies uh turkish employees are so uh friendly and sharing knowledge i see that in uh, istanbul actually uh it's not related to events actually because in events you can just get the some tricks or uh some uh, valuable information but uh, i was meaning about i was talking about uh, we are building better relationships. It's the success, uh, I think. Uh, I mean, collaborations coming up about this, that friendships between the different companies uh, inside of Turkish market. Actually, that was my opinion uh, because uh, I learned a lot from many people from different companies when I started in 2020, uh, 2012. Uh, but... Uh, I can say it like mm, not focusing on the one uh, like game developer events or some t some stuff like that. Uh, on the market side, even agents, a gaming agencies are sharing a lot of inf information each other. I was talking about that information, not the technical stuff. So what, what do you mean by gaming agencies? Uh, even, you know, there are many gaming, uh, game marketing agencies. Uh, agencies in Turkey, they are working for your uh, QA videos, uh, exact like events, like community building. Uh, okay. They're helping to growing the market, most of many of them. And even they are helping each other. Uh, yeah, that's great. Know, yeah, yeah. No, not only think, the game developers. Yeah, I think we need more of that in the production side. I, I guess yeah, that's what I'm yeah, trying to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. I so, understand you well. Yeah, th th there is a distinction, I believe, because you know uh, we don't have that good level of you know. I didn't have your experience, and I'm well connected in Turkey. You know, I don't. I I, I wish I could say that, but you know, I have personal relationships. That's good. But uh, for example, when you when you go to Germany, when you attend yeah. games. Devcom, yeah. for example, yeah. you'll see a different scenario. And when you talk to yeah. them, like, how did you guys do it? And they, they told you that they had the same problems. So everybody was trying to hide their data or very, you know, at least not very um, courageous about sharing. Let me put it in a milder <laughs> way. Um, and then they started to do this kind of events and organizing like different types of uh, communities so that but it, like within years, 
they realize the more they share, the more they grow. So yeah. we 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 want to do that kind of thing. And yet, I, I for example, there are two NGOs in Turkey when it comes to game production. I would like to see them collaborate and do a giant event, like, for example, why not? Or at least have some sort of a digital community, at least, like, to share. How did you do this? Like, no, I I, I would like to tell people like how I build an internship program. Yeah. I I can yeah, yeah. I can learn that from from a from an individual by asking. But why don't we copy and paste? You know. Yeah. That's that's done better in South Korea, in my opinion. In, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, in Germany, that's why I actually uh -huh. gave them as an example. Um, but maybe we learn, we should learn a lot from the uh, agency side. If if that yeah, if that's yeah. something you you already have, why not you know learning from? Yeah, totally right. Yeah, there's there's definitely room for improvement. But going back to what you said initially, it's definitely not a sprint; it's a marathon. And I do think, like, I've been in this industry for a couple of while, and I've been a gamer all, a couple of years, and I've been a gamer all my life. And going, like, you know, being a member within the ecosystem, I'm definitely seeing improvements. Just even, like, you know, people like you, like yourselves, you, know, you guys being here together, us being here, uh, like, we're probably going to be the pioneers of this, of this, you know, sharing of this, of this growth that we're going to be, like, driving behind together. Even just participating in, like, your hit games conference or other like big conferences in Turkey, um, it, it, it's, it really creates value. And um, I've really was, you know, lucky and successful enough to add like great people to my network and ask them stuff like, hey, I don't know what to do. We've, we've made such and such success, but I don't know where to go from here. What should I do? How should I plan my next step? And I can ask the people that have achieved similar successes before me so I don't repeat the mistakes that they did or I don't have to go through the struggles that they went to take my product to the next level and then become the inspiration for the other small studio that's gonna be growing up and be like, hey, I'm gonna be like Aiden Games one day. And that's how an entire ecosystem goes. 100% agree with what every one of you said, like great words really. Um, yeah, but I, I mean, like I said, I think we're in that growth stage and I'm hopeful that it's only going to get better from here on out. Yeah, well, but there's definitely room for improvement. <laughs> I, I, I don't want I don't want to be misunderstood because they're, like I learned a lot from my peers. Like uh, uh, I don't want to name give names, but you know, like I I I I've gotten advice from people who like did exits, multiple ones, and mm -hmm. you know, uh, they helped me like a lot. I learned something in like five minutes which would cost me like five months maybe. Uh, so that that that's something we should copy and paste. That's what I just wanted yep. to, maybe yeah. maybe a more structured way. And I'm thinking about stuff. So maybe first quarter of 2024, we're gonna do I'm something. Looking forward yeah. To it. Yeah. Yeah. I want to add one more thing. Even right now, yeah. the acceleration programs or investment programs are just uh, gathering together not just making uh, a rivalry or something like that. I think I can give some names, you know, right now in Turkish game market, uh, especially on the investment side, uh, we play Startgate, uh, Boss Ventures. They started to work collaborating more, more Lutus and more. Lutus is also very active yeah, as well. That, yeah. that, that Lutus Ventures has also been year. great stuff. Yeah, it started with this year. I think it will grow and it will make another exponential uh, progress in the games market in Turkey too. It will just yeah. create more developers uh, because if even the investors or uh, that group starting to st uh, work together, so there won't be any um, mistakes each other because they every yeah. everyone will just teach the other one in the dead group. Yeah, so it we will make like another. Yeah, yeah, we are like 15, 20,000 people in total. So yeah, it's yeah. like a small town. You know, it's not a, nothing yeah. crazy. But we have yeah. to we have to have hundreds of thousands of people if we want yeah. to do. Like I, I think Turkey is gonna be in top ten in terms of like the global game production. It's not yeah. just mobile. I'm talking about everything yeah, yeah. and. It's 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 not easy. Like they're very very, there's fierce competition. Let me put it that way. Uh, but even, I think we, we we have what it got, get. Yeah. Even but, even this early in a growing market, like you said it best. Like we might quite possibly the best 
uh, like uh, free to, country to re yeah, yeah. We genuinely might be the best. We're amazing at that. Look at the titles. Look at the companies. You look look yeah. at Dream. Look at Peak. Look at like yeah, yeah. Uh, Tail Worlds, Mountain Blade, yeah. and yeah. like Royal Match. Incredible yeah. games. And I'm talking multi million, if not billion dollar success mm -hmm. stories this mm -hmm. early on. So there's definitely a lot of promise there. We've proven to the entire world uh, the mm -hmm. potential we have, and that's why I'm I'm quite. Quite frankly, I'm, I'm honestly, despite it being a rough few months, maybe even a year or so, uh, yeah. I, I'm quite, I'm quite hopeful and optimistic for the future of the industry for everyone involved. Sure, there's only like 15, 20,000 of us right now. Who's to say that's not going to double or triple in the next two years? Hopefully, I can't yeah. say it. Yeah. I can't say it for yeah. certain because we've grown that's exponentially. Yeah, that's the yeah. hope. That's the goal. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, at, at our peak, we were 83 people. Uh, now we are <laughs> way, way smaller. But uh, we can scale, and we can scale fast. So that's our competitive advantage. So why not doubling down on it? That's that's my exactly. Point. Um, this is a good leeway as well. Uh, one of my questions that I want to ask is: while we're talking about competitive advantages, what our potential looks like, and what can be held for us in the future uh, in the Turkish gaming market compared to the global market, what do you think the challenges are? Like we've talked about the opportunities just a little bit, but if you have any additional opportunities that you think think of, obviously mention those as well. What are the challenges and opportunities for the game developers specifically uh, in Turkey? But we can talk about publishers, we can talk about legal side, organizers, esports side, watch on, you know, that's kind of your specialty as well. What sort of challenges are here that we need to first overcome? Obviously, we need to share information more. We need to be more open, more receptive. Uh, we need to like, you know, kind of be approachable and reachable. You know, we can't have people not picking up their phones when would cause them, you know, that's, that's just not going <laughs> to, that, that dog don't hunt. That's not going to work. Uh, yeah. What are the challenges? What are the opportunities here, guys? Uh, probably, I can start. Uh, sorry. Biggest, sorry. Uh, probably biggest and uh, the everyone uh, face off is the uh, funding, uh, you know, uh, the budgets and funding. Uh, I, I think uh, there's nothing too much to say about that. Uh, we don't have a, a budget to make uh, GTA 6 or, uh, but uh, it will be, it can be maybe uh, someday. And this uh, disadvantage uh, right now, uh, but uh, we can just do uh, what we can afford right now. And I'm blaming the results are really good uh, comparing to budgets. And uh, I'm believing the uh, industry has really uh, talented people uh, right now. The, uh, on my low side, I can say uh, the challenge of the uh, small studios, uh, especially, is uh, they don't know much about the legal side. And uh, like the uh, indie studios, uh, they don't uh, just they don't care of legal side, but in the end, uh, the bad uh, one, uh, for example, a bad publishing contract or bad investment contract can, uh, can kill uh, all of that work they work for years. Uh, so uh, I'm trying to uh, reach out, uh, especially the small studios, to say, uh, be careful. <laughs> just. Uh, <laughs> Publishers are evil. Be careful. <laughs> uh, we can't say evil, but they, uh, I believe they see a lot of opportunities uh, to while looking them. <laughs> so I think I should say, because and I know, Yakin, you're making a joke here. Obviously. But publishers are the reason developers grew their, you know, businesses. And yeah. when, when, when you have such a resource, you know, you should focus on doubling down and uh, I, I think I've never seen such growth in any ecosystem let alone gaming so this is I think even as a joke I, I don't I, I think we should be proud of the publishers we generated like oh yeah for sure uh, Rolex has been yeah. tremendous not only, in our not only Rolex like, oh, just for our, oh, you for know, our like, things like the, we've been working yeah. with Rolex and they've been a tremendous help too and just a quick anecdote. I'm going to let you finish. Yeah. GTA 6's budget was roughly estimated to be at $2 billion. Now, imagine a world without publishers. Just imagine. And, and, and let me 
let me tell you one more thing and then uh, I'll let you finish uh, back. Uh, you know, in 2022, like almost half a billion dollars came to Turkey as investment to game companies. So I don't think the, the problem is the money. I, I, don't, I, I don't buy that. I, uh, and that we have problems. And I think number one is talent. So let me just say that because that's, that's number one. Uh, but I, I, I think uh, the, the, the psychological barriers are the second biggest problems, such as like we have to have money to do. No, I think if you convince people that you're going to print money with your game, they're going to give you $3 billion. It's all metrics. If there's a return on investment, I, I at this point it's like zero point zero 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 one per percent chance that you can do it. Maybe you think, but if you start with a million, then ten, then hundred, then billion, and it is doable. And we have track record of it, like by, dream game, yeah, dream games. It's a great example. They just raised seven million, then fifty million, then I think uh, two hundred and fifty-seven or something like that. Uh, and now we have one of the companies that is in top 50 in the global arena, which is amazing in just less than, I, I guess, three years. Right? You don't even have to look that far. I think another great example is T-Play Studios, by the way. Like you guys have, <laughs> sort of, you. no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not joking. I'm not saying this just because you're here, but just yeah. go into Google and type in T-Play News and read about it. You guys have also set a great example for the industry on Thank how you. to, like, yeah, seriously. It's manageable. Hey, look, other people have done it. And look, we've done it as well. It's great to be able to like share and just like pick your brain on topics like this because you're a real life case of someone that's done what's being talked about right now, which is great insight for us. Thank you. I appreciate this. It's uh, the power of like uh, creating a team and just believing in something. And both like all founders, uh, like Ahmed Osman and I, we don't we don't have barriers like the the common thing we are very we're coming from very different backgrounds and the the common theme amongst all three founders is that we don't believe in limits like the very first day we started this company we said we are going to be a unicorn we're going to make Denis the silicon valley of turkey like big things and guess what snapchat invested in us now we're connected to silicon valley so you you manifested and then that happens we make games for tiktok we are making games for BMW. And this is all because of the fact that we are working in Denis with this amazing team. I'm proud of it. And I've I've heard from investors that he cannot do it in Denis. Like I've heard that and we didn't we didn't believe that. So we just said thank you and just kept moving. Hello. Our CEO just decided to hop in and say hi, but she must behind me. How's it going? Just, uh, to say <laughs> hi. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for the inter interruption. Uh, any I, other I, thoughts? On, I want yeah, to add one more please. thing about Dennis Lee. I was there uh, at last week. Uh, there are many young game developers. Uh, I can say this for themselves. Uh, about funding side, they don't have the Mm, right technological stuff you know uh they can make games they uh, they were uh, uh their problem was that they talked with me about it and they're they're all saying they want to do more uh, but their uh computers uh, or technological uh they have technological problem about the funding their computers are not good enough for the next technologies they were all talk the same, but I told them just uh, start from smaller games. And then they showed me their smaller games. We have a really good young uh, game developer, developer base in Turkey, especially in Denizli. I was just shocked last week. It was yeah. really good to see them. Uh, but funding is making some problem. I totally agree, Umut about yes. uh, the topic of funding. Uh, actually, investment is really easy to get if you have if you got really good metrics, uh, but the funding for a starter uh, studios, like in the game studios, even they're not in the, they're just trying to make some things. 
like Berk said. So they're even not uh, an indie game studio. They just want to make a portfolio, but they can't use some engines, like some features of Unreal Engine. We, we lived that last year. Our game was on the uh, Unity because our spec uh, wasn't enough for Unreal Engine. So we changed it after we just joined the start gate, for example. Actually, so, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt, but uh, I want to uh, add uh, one thing uh, the Unreal Engine asks for a good performance of computer, but uh, in the same time, uh, there's a Rob there are Roblox developers right now to passing through yeah. Roblox to Unity or Unreal Engine. They are just starting from there. And uh, I, I believe uh, it won't be a, problem to have a uh, haven't got a, a good PC in the future for uh, the beginners uh, in my opinion I hope so yeah <laughs> I I think that the, the the problems you mentioned are psychological barriers I mentioned it's not real it's not ah. real they can do everything they everybody has a computer they they can come <laughs> knock my door and find I can give them a computer if they convince me. actually we couldn't uh, in the beginning, but we did, of course, with the improvements. Uh, but in the beginning, I am talking about the first months of the game development. Yeah, it's really I'm talking about yeah. The, yeah. Uh, it, it's some of them psychological barrier. Like I said, we just didn't stop, and we just made a uh, just little games, uh, not using the all whole the technology. Uh, this side can be a psychological barrier if we could stop. We could stop and say, oh, yeah, our technological is not good enough for it. It is psychological barrier. But we just uh, changed our project in the beginning because of the, uh, our source resources was limited. Uh, it can be on the starting steps, but like Umut said, you can find investment so easily in Turkey. If you have good metrics, if you got good portfolio, if... Uh, you have a good business development plan and business strategy dev uh, business strategy plan, uh, also a marketing plan. You need just eight documents to get your investment. Just eight, uh, not nine. By the, I, by I the understand way, that predicament. Just, um, just I want to correct something because you know I don't want to yeah. create a wrong impression that I said investment is easy. I don't. I don't agree. That it, I don't think I said investment is what I said is funding is not the problem. You can find funding if your project is good. It's not easy. It's very hard. So every hundred ideas, you know, you have maybe one of them can become, you know, finding it and getting it are different stories as well. Yeah, like, yeah. 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 It's hard. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not yeah. saying it's easy, but what I'm saying is, pop, some people think that oh, it's too hard. And then talk about like not having a computer or not enough, like the right software, or, you know, whatever that have they in there. That's the psychological that, barrier. Yeah. That, that's yeah. the psychological. You can do everything you want yeah. in the long run. If you really so, believe in it and work hard, and if you're at the right place at the right time, then I, I believe that. So that, that's why I mentioned funding is not a problem, but funding is not easy. Yeah. I, yeah, so I want to, I want to correct cool. myself too. Uh, it becomes easier when you have everything ready. You had, for example, your game demo, your metrics. If everything is looking well, and if you sell your games and you have data of it, so it becomes easier than uh, easier than doing nothing. I just well, want it, to make it better. It really, it really mitigates the risk that either the investor, uh, the fund, or the publisher is going to uh, undertake when you go to someone and say hey look i've got this product for every ten dollar i put in this product i get a hundred dollars back why don't you put in a million dollars then you get 10 million and i get five million of that and you get five million of that. when you can show traction when you can show yeah record hey look i've got this amazing game and i've got such and such people playing in like tier two and tier three countries let's run the test on the us on on canada and like let's scale this thing up together why don't you give me x amount of money and then i'll give you your exit strategy in three years and we'll both be richer then yes with that but in order to get to that stage i also understand where your struggles come from because when starting from scratch when you don't have traction when you don't have anything to show for then it becomes a challenge but then yeah what you need to focus on isn't funding you need to focus on your fundamentals on 
how do I build a successful product? Yeah, that's an entirely different story. Yeah, that story can take up another uh, entire panel. And uh, I've got Olga texting me. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, questions, and this is a very hot topic as well. Now I'm gonna. Uh, I wanted to talk about a little bit about esports, but maybe if we'll have time, I'll talk about it as well. But this is a very, very, very controversial topic. Uh, how do you think the removal of the Turkish lira from the Steam platform? Well, <laughs> game studios and gamers in Turkey. Ooh, spicy. <laughs> I love this question. Go on, the stage uh, is yours. I, I don't know if you have Steam game, but I got one, <laughs> and I can say this. Uh, it was just uh, we just uh, lose our that psychological barrier after the Steam just changed that Turkish lira. Uh, I just was gone insane oh, as a gamer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, I think it's the better thing for game developers in Turkey. It was better for our revenue. It's better right now because in Turkey it was like one dollar, but in USA or other European countries it was like four dollars. When there is someone to, uh, buying it Turkey, I was saying, oh, okay. But someone buying it from Europe, it could be just changing. And you were just uh, trying to give everyone the same service quality. So with uh, with this Turkish removal, okay, it was bad for our game market community. But it's better for our game developers. So they can't uh, make some um, huge differences with the games. So they can sell their games in a um, better price. And it was better for our global market reach because uh, I want to answer that with the question and the previous question. I think our biggest challenge as a game developers or game studios is about global market reach on PC, not mobile. We are really good at mobile. Our companies like T-Play, they know how to play in that zone. They know the mobile zone, but the Steam side or the comp PC games, it was really hard to global market reach. We we got re real good, good games in Turkey, but they they are just playing zero or ten in Steam. So it's re really it was really hard thing. But with this uh, dollar currency, so our focus will go more about global market reach in Steam. So it was a better thing to game developers. But as a gamer, I just uh, I it didn't. Sucks. Yeah, I didn't buy anything after it changed. I didn't buy anything. Like one month, I just stopped. Yeah, we're all we're all to blame. Like you know, we're getting, we're you know, we're we're working in the game industry, but but at well, like, at the end of the day, I am a gamer too, and the Steam change affects me as well. But on the other hand, well, maybe I should you know kind of focus on PC games now because you know dollar currency that's kind of kind of enticing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I and I definitely that. agree with like having a more global approach when you have like a singular thing. Uh, you don't have to plan separately for Turkey and for like your global approach. And then when you when someone buys from Turkey, you get less excited because it's like a quarter of what it's worth normally. So yeah, definitely agree. Yeah. I guess a uh, lot of customer will, uh, was uh, stocking games for maybe six or six months or a year. Uh, for example, I, I also bought uh, many games before the 20th of <laughs> November. Uh, and uh, I believe uh, that a lot of uh, huge releases was uh, this year also. And the Turkish uh, players had no money in their pocket also. Uh, the last few coins maybe. And the uh, news was bad on their side, I believe. Because uh, uh, it means it will be not only current change. It will be. It means uh, the AAA games will be more expensive uh, because uh, the bigger studios just doesn't care uh, if they can buy or not. Uh, everyone gonna find uh, money to buy their game. So the rest of the uh, market will be uh, affected uh, from that change. I believe. I agree with you guys. I think it's a good good change in, in terms of you know the game production aspect of things. So the, it's good for the ecosystem, production ecosystem. Yeah, it's good for growth. Uh, I think it was either Nintendo CEO or Bandai Namco. I'm not sure. It definitely started with an N. But what he said was uh, you know very logical. He said 
like 20, 30 years ago, I would, it would cost me like X amount of uh, dollars to develop a game. Uh, Mario, it was definitely, uh, it was definitely Nintendo, by the way. The CEO of Nintendo said this. 20, 30 years ago, it would cost me like a couple thousand dollars to develop a game. And I would sell it, sell cartridges for $19.99, right? $19.99. Now it costs million dollars, of, like millions of dollars to develop a AAA title game. And I'm selling it for $60. He was also talking about like the accepted, I guess, uh, like benchmark of AAA title uh, games being sold on stores like PSN, Microsoft, and Steam. And he was saying that the costs simply are way too much compared to what you make uh, in comparison when you look at the ratio. So yeah, maybe this will be a step in the right direction for us. Now, uh, there's one more, uh, well, there are a couple more questions, but there's one more question that I'm going to have to have enough time because we need to wrap things up here um another uh, interesting topic is uh from uh, coming from the audience the question is i feel like there's a huge decrease in synergy between studios and publishers etc everyone is on a mindset like survive by yourself what are your thoughts about this is there a decrease between publisher and studio I i'm i'm gonna be honest not so much on our end. <laughs> We're doing okay. <laughs> uh, actually, I, I believe uh, everyone should we have uh, another plan uh, except publishers. Uh, publishers was uh, publishers were uh, have a good opportunity for uh, startups, for example, which hasn't got any marketing budget and uh, and any know how uh, on marketing side. Uh, for example, three developers could uh, develop a game and uh, publishing with publishers uh, and make that hit. Uh, but market change, publisher behaviors change, and uh, the studios just only focusing with uh, publishing contracts uh, were uh, had to find another thing. So everyone should have another plan. Actually, uh, the publishing system is good for starting, I believe. But if you have marketing budgets, uh, everyone, uh, I guess, uh, will be agree. It's the be better self-publishing, but you should have some marketing budget and know-how. And uh, I'm believing this year was hard for studios uh, like us with working with publishers because the uh, really uh, funding problems was the main problem for uh, more of them a lot of them but uh, we will we should survive and uh, we should find a way out for uh, that uh, i believe it's a good thing for long term uh, this year was uh, and the publisher studio relations uh, goes what it should be uh, the main thing is not working it should not be working with publisher the main thing should be the good game uh, i believe that uh we're about to wrap it up here so this will be the last question if yeah. you guys have any closing remarks on this i'll get those yeah, and then we'll close yeah I, I would like to add a few things here i think publishing and developer relationship the scheme is a win-win scenario because you know publishing a game is like selling a car and developing a game is like manufacturing a car so you need to know about who's buying your car when you manufacture but these are totally different things different animals now i believe like i don't i don't necessarily think that you need to self-publish uh, if you're a big studio uh, we created a new category with the accelerated program where we we can say that we co-publishing for example with Rolik. um and also there are many examples uh, of like big companies like thousands of people working with another company to publish a game because they have they share different know-how so there is no like one silver bullet but i think there's no right or wrong here so you can self-publish, you can publish with publishers, you can co-publish, co-develop. There's different business models. But the point is, back, I agree with you on that. It's the, it's the game. So it's a fun game. You can find great solutions regarding business model. You can find a publisher, you can self-fund it, you can do both. And I think this year was a great year in terms of 
you know, becoming more mature about, you know, the developer and uh, publisher relationships because uh, some developers unfortunately got the wrong idea that the money they received was not a development cost funding, but it was an income. So these guys are being eliminated as we speak. So we are getting more and more strong, like stronger and stronger day by day. Yarkun, can I add the last thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll yeah, finish. Okay. Yeah, okay. go ahead. I was waiting for uh, you. <laughs> I can tell that uh, if you want to do something in games market, you can just start small about if, if it's a PC game, just release a game in Steam and learn the basics. It's really fun to learning the basics of Steam marketing. And there is there are huge resources. Even if someone just message me, I can help them. Uh, it, it could be a pleasure for me. I'm not uh, talking as a, it's the most my professionals or grandmaster stuff on Steam, but it's really easy. Uh, the other important uh, topic uh, can be as a last thing, uh, if you are new in games market in Turkey, you just need to localize it. It's uh, something important for every market, but in Turkey, it's like the most important thing is your localization. I'm not talking about only the language. You need to localize many stuff for Turkish market, for their UX, for their uh, liking stuff. I don't know if it's the sentence the, that can be. Uh, culturalization yeah, yeah culturalization yeah yeah you are right they're so important uh the publisher side uh i was worked at the publishers not the developers before uh when, when i was at the publisher side or the um, opposite side i just see that if you have synergy the synergy is the most keyword for me for the publisher and developers if if i am a developer and looking for a publisher it, there, there is not the best publisher. You need to find that synergy. Uh, if you have that synergy, yeah, that's the most uh, important publisher for you. That can be. Yeah, thank you awesome. for. Thank you. Yeah, for thanks. Me. Thanks for the input. Uh, thanks to everyone that listened to us. Uh, I'm gonna have to wrap things up here. Uh, this has been a ton of fun. Reach out to Berk, Bochan, Umut and myself on uh, LinkedIn, on Pine, wherever, and uh, we can discuss uh, these things more. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a nice Friday. Thank you, guys. It was a blessing. Cheers. Cheers. Bye-bye.